we're going to keep going um, with our next speaker, uh, Carly Chai, uh, Legal Counsel for BP Healthcare. Hi, everyone. It's Carly here. I'm the Legal Counsel from BP Healthcare. And uh, thank you, Carly, for the brief uh, introduction. So let me try to share uh, my screen. Okay, all right. So um, I've uh, fixed the title for this presentation as COVID-19 screening at the border. Are we really ready for that? So um, just a little bit background about Dr. Tu Yu. Dr. Tu is actually uh, an IT arm under BP Healthcare and uh, is actually to fill the gap between uh, healthcare and public uh, through IT solution. Um, and these are the services that we provide. So we do have a whole doctor home visit, ambulance services, medication delivery, and on-demand nursing and on-demand physiotherapy. So all this uh, healthcare personnel will be uh, will be sent to you uh, through the uh, through the order on the app. And on top of that, we have telemedicine, and then we have. Uh, IT system and software to support uh, healthcare related services in terms of hospitals and laboratory. And we Carly, also... just one second. Um, are you, we still are just seeing your first slide. Have you advanced your slides yet? Um, yes. Uh, are you seeing the who we are slide? No, I'm just seeing the first slide. Um, maybe stop sharing and reshare again. Sometimes it's just a setting. Is it working now? Mm, we can't see your slides yet, so try resharing. Okay, we've got the first slide. Okay, is, can you see the second slide now? Nope. <laughs> Uh-oh, what do we do? Okay, thank you, Kang Bi. Thanks for saving me. Okay, all right, let's continue. So, um, these are the services that we uh, that I mentioned just now. So we have uh, on-demand healthcare services. You can order the services through the Doctor to You app, and we will provide uh, these services. And on top of that, we have telemedicine, and then we have systems and software to support hospitals and laboratory, laboratory. and we have e-medical health record as well for the pathology result and radiology reports. Next slide, please. And since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, BP Healthcare is actually at the forefront of the fight against uh, the, this, uh, this virus uh, since last year, March. And we have conducted millions of uh, COVID-19 testing in, uh, in Malaysia. So uh, as you can see, this is our experience and credentials on just COVID-19 uh, testing. And our capacity, uh, it's 100K tests per day. And it's scalable based on demand. And recently, we have expanded our services to KLIA, which is the international airport as well. Next slide, please. And these are the services that we, uh, sorry, we have provided the COVID-19 testing to our Ministry of Health and Burkeso, which is an organization under the Ministry of uh, Human Resources. Uh, next slide. And these are the other ministries that we have served uh, so far. 
Next slide. And we have collaborated with Affinity before, and this is the partnership uh, between Tamase and BP in Malaysia, is to provide a verifiable uh, COVID-19 swab test result in line with the Singaporean Ministry of Health and Government, uh, and Gov Government Tax Singapore scheme requirements. And this program went live on 23rd December, 2020. Next slide. So this is the sample uh, report, uh, COVID-19 report that BP is currently using. And you can see the QR code on the top right corner. Next slide. So uh, like what I mentioned just now, BP has been uh, appointed to uh, set up lab laboratory to test all the inbound passengers, uh, all the inbound passengers at the airport. But at the same time, we have BP outlets nationwide. So we often get uh, passengers who come in to walk in to do COVID tests prior to, to the departure. And from there, we do have uh, questions from the passengers uh, asking, uh, what, asking about the requirements of their destination country. So I would say this is the uh, challenges that we are facing right now. Uh, as a healthcare provider, our, our capacity is only to do and provide COVID testing, but we are not able to answer um, other requirements. But we I have collect, collected and summarized uh, these questions into the challenges. So as you can see from point one, um, we noticed that the COVID-19 test requirements varies dependent, uh, depending on the des destination country. So, uh, like what Jonathan and Alvin mentioned just now, different countries may require um, different time period uh, of the COVID test result before they depart. Some is 72 hours, some 48 hours. And also there's no standard format used uh, fixed by any of the authority when it comes to COVID-19 result. Um, for at the moment, our report, we use the word not detected if you are, you are not detected with COVID-19. Uh, for, however, for some of the country, the authority required to have the word negative on the report. So this is like the, one of the major challenges that we are facing right now. We are not able uh, to amend the wording of not detected to negative due to the uh, ISO compliance uh, or the uh, JCI compliance. So yeah, and also, we have um, issues with tempered report. Despite having a QR code, we still receive complaints or um, feedback saying that uh, the report is not genuine. It has been tempered. And more, uh, very often it's because of visual verification. And all this verification is not done by or, or not uh, monitored by the authority or appointed organization. And from the point, uh, from the viewpoint of a healthcare provider, I would say this is really uh, a visual verification is insufficient. Okay, next slide. And um, BP, uh, as what I mentioned just now, BP was uh, appointed by the Malaysian Airport to manage and operate the COVID nineteen screening and testing. Uh, at the airport, KLIA and KLIA2. And we are expecting 40,000 passengers a day at our border. So um, uh, for, the current, for the current situation right now and the requirement at the moment is that uh, once the passengers arrive at the airport, they are required to do uh, an RT-PCR test at, in our BP lab station in KLIA itself. Next slide, please. So these are the information where, uh, information required uh, required upon arrival. So as a healthcare provider at the airport, we are actually, we are actually stationed before the immigration, meaning we are the, actually the first point of contact that the 
passengers will be in touch with and the authority require us to check or to verify uh, the various information and documents provided by the passengers. However, as a, like I said, we are just a healthcare provider and our ability is quite limited. Like uh, from the checklist, there are actually a list of 11 documents required the passenger to produce upon arrival. And I just named uh, three, uh, three medical healthcare related information required. So the first one is the COVID-19 PCR test from the origin country. Um, second is the vaccination status. And third one is actually the health uh, travel insurance. So this three information, of course we can do visual verification, but we think this is not enough. Uh, we would definitely need an authority or um, a partner to help us verify this information, especially some of the reports or um, certificates are actually issued in non-English uh, language. Uh, this part is actually quite troublesome for us as well. And I, in fact, I just came back from the airport. I've been stationed in the airport to observe and to monitor the operation of the Singapore Malaysia vaccinated travelers lane, the VTL. And I noticed that uh, there are some process or uh, SOP that we need to fine tune, which I'll address later. But for now, for all the inbound passengers upon arrival, our challenges as a healthcare provider at the, at the, first, end, at the, as the first point of contact is actually to verify the authenticity of different documents and information. And on top of that, um, we have uh, different program and exceptions for travelers under different programs. For example, the VTL and the VTC or the TNC or the Langkawi Travel Bubble, all these different programs, they have got different requirements and all these requirements are always changing. So as a healthcare provider, we, we have to always keep up with the uh, with the updates, uh, with the updates of the policies and guidelines, and this could cause, uh, and this could cause um, um, a little bit of challenge for us. Next slide, please. So this is the flow, the brief flow uh, of the VTL passengers at the moment, which may change later on. So we are tasked to screen all inbound passengers traveling from Singapore to Malaysia through the VTL program that, uh, that was just started two days ago. And from, my, from our observation is that uh, if let's say we fully utilize technology, that would definitely ensure a seamless traveling process for all the passengers entering Malaysia. For example, making pre-purchase COVID-19 tests before departure as a mandatory measure, uh, as a mandatory step, instead of them doing a uh, manual purchase in Malaysia itself upon arrival. And also to have self-registration chaos station at the airport and also a, a digital verification system instead of a manual one. And with digital verification, I believe it would help with, it would help with uh, ensuring the authenticity of the certificates and information as well. Next. So the question is, are we really ready uh, to open the border? Uh, to do, or Sorry, are we ready to do the test at the border? As a healthcare provider, I would say, yes, we are ready. In fact, we have already started. We are monitoring the progress and the process. However, when it comes to health credentials and verification, I think this is the part that um, all the authorities, uh, all the authorities and partners have to discuss and further improve. Okay, thank you. That's it.
Thank you. Um, yeah, the, you, you're raising some of the key questions that I hope we as a community can start to, to dialogue in the community forum section. Um, and yes, appreciate it. Yeah, and, and it's interesting how, you know, one of the great things about this forum is getting all the people from different parts of the customer journey and how aspects are falling on you as a healthcare provider that you're like, wait, that's not our job, right? And so how do we get the different actors to do their piece and fit them together instead of expecting some actors to do things that this is not in their domain of expertise or or what they want to be doing. Um, yes, I think that's true. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. 